I have to do whatever Rocking Horse Dreams wants. So I got a message uh, suggesting that I do a, a tour of my games and game space uh, this morning and then was sub subsequently gifted with time. My son just decided he wanted to play in his room by himself for a while. Uh, I thought I would just do it. Um, I, I'm kind of just woken up, uh, but we'll, we'll do this. All right, so start here with this is my secondary table. We start here because that's where the mirror was and I thought it would be good if I started with the mirror. That mirror used to be on the wall but I took it down during some reorganizing and haven't put it back up again. Um, in front of the mirror is a piece of glass. This is actual glass and I've cut myself on it many times. Uh, my wife was going to Goodwill and I asked her if she would get me a, a picture with a large piece of plexiglass on it. She got real glass and it works but it's also scary because <laughs> um, I cut my hands on it a couple times. You gotta be very careful with it and I'm a clumsy and incautious person. Um, here's my tripod. I got that uh, for, got that for super, for pretty cheap. It was um, like in a damaged box or something. At Best Buy of all places. I don't know why I was at Best Buy, but um, maybe I just really wanted a tripod. So luckily we have some real people up here. These were playing in a game of Crusoe's Planet, which you can see I have the quick start rules. I don't use the quick start rules, but I have them there because I didn't bother to pack them when I took the game to game day. So you see here, we have Demi and Fries and Pinky and Watermelon, Roadrunner and Junior. I've played several games with um, portions of this group. Kind of chose them at random from people I've played with already, uh, which is a fun, fun way to play, play games solitaire. You see down here I have some papers strewn about. These are mainly recording different games of Crusoe's Planet and I was taking a running puzzle. Okay, here we have my kind of smaller game shelf. Um, you can hear my son up in his room. His room's right above ours. My light is falling. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Alright, this is a smaller game shelf. A lot of these, um, are smaller games. They're not ones I... Well, yeah. They're, no, I access some of them fairly frequently. Um, it has smaller games. Glory Rome, that's a great game. Tulip Mania, I like. A uh, lot, lot of these games I haven't played. Um, they'll be like little games that I'll just find in, in auctions or in masses, um, lots and whatnot don't really do that anymore. It's just not, I, I'm trying, I, I'm not trying, I'm just not doing that anymore. Um, it's got little drawers with little odds and ends. These are like random, these are stands, these are really helpful. Um, note cards, cards, this is a bottle of water, I guess. This is a, this is a little, little drawers. Um, that's something I've gotten a lot. Some things. <laughs> the pretty great organization system, isn't it? Oh yeah, this is. A, um, these are for. Oh, the, here are these cards for this game that uh, someone, Doctor Rock, made called Silver Bars. I think I forget. There's a number and then silver bars. Maybe a hundred silver bars. Um, here's World and Four Axe along with a pair of scissors. Um, let's see, and these boxes, I always want to use these boxes for games, but I can never find like the right box for the right box size. Um, there's a box with card games in it, little card games that for the most part I haven't played. I've played Flux um, before. I knew about a lot of games. I think Flux gets a bad name though. If you're gonna play Flux, you gotta play it three player. It's not a party game. It's not a game to play with a lot of people. Uh, if you play three player, you're going to have some choice in what happens to you, and it's it can be interesting. Once upon a time, great great game. I made this box. Well, I didn't make the box, but I collaged over it because um, my box is broken. It's something I like want to do with a lot of games because uh, I, I, packaging is kind of a pet peeve of mine. Um, but I rarely set aside the time to do it. Here are my giraffes up there. All right, um, we'll move over here. This is the light I use for my secondary table. It's also my reading light. It's terrible. This clamp never stays on, um, but it, it, it's serviceable. Uh, we can go around here. This is, if you remember, if you if you watch the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, the tournament table used to be here. It was a table I made out of a crib. 
Um, I've since upgraded to a professionally made table, but you can see a lot of the stuff is still on the wall over there. It's my bed. I just got up. Um, this is the book I'm reading. <laughs> this is, uh, uh, I've, the Crucis plan has really gotten me into economics as sort of a game system that's overlaid over um, our society. And this book's really interesting. It doesn't really like go into um, go into uh, economic theories in a in a very academic way, but it shows the connection of economics with uh, real life, which is nice. So let's see, if we look over here, that here we have a bunch of games. This is like a blob. If this corner here is kind of, I mean, most of these games I got at thrift shops, um, occasionally in trades. Shadow Lord was a game I was really excited about because it had an exclamation point. I had a thing with exclamation points for a while. You see Shadow Lord right there. Um, I'm not super excited to play now though. I kind of, my, my heart gets ahead of myself. But these are kind of all long boxes. Some of them, I probably don't like Repicola. I'm not interested really in playing um, that October Legends box. That's if you ever see those. I think that's like a that's a, a con. Um, yeah, it like I think it's it's maybe sold through like baseball card shops. It's kind of in that thing. I got it at a thrift shop, but then when I was like it was in shrink wrap too. I was like it's missing some pieces, and they're like, oh, we'll sell you all these pieces for fourteen dollars, and it looking at their website it seems like that's what they're trying to do too personal portraits that's a i think a family pastimes party game i kind of want to dig that out i'd never look in this corner though because it's got a lot of games so i'm not excited about that halo box i should probably just get rid of it just doesn't have the, the all the pieces that's something like a thrift shop find raging champions is awesome sometime i'll just talk about raging champions um and what else just some empire Make history in your living room floor. Probably won't play that game again, to tell you the truth. Uh, see, right here, here we have this game, which I got it to the shop. Um, really like that guy right there. Um, this, oh, this is a fun story. Since I'm probably going to file this under Game and World, Regatta, so Regatta uh, was a request that. I forget, I did like a lottery drawing to see who got to choose a, a game review. And I think I just did one for free for Kate 108 on Board Game Geek because she's a really nice lady. And um, she suggests this one, she's a boatsman I think. And one of the, I, I run a daycare, one of our parents is uh, is a boatsman as well and I loaned this game to, to him and I think he enjoyed it. Uh, probably, I think he played it once with a sailing buddy. but. <laughs> so that's fun. Um, Power Barons. Stonehenge is one I've been wanting to try. It's not like that's the I like really like the concept behind Stonehenge. I'm I just I, it hasn't like interested like the actual games haven't interested me enough. I like the concept of game systems or just like pieces that you can play a lot of different games with. Um, but then I never in practice do that posture. Maybe because I have so much crap. Uh, picture Strike, that's Picture Strike right there. Uh, I got that in a trade at a swap meet. Some people, this guy came from out of town and tried to organize a swap meet. To, he was a very gamey gamer. Um, you know, it's a nice guy. <coughs> um, had a lot of things for sale. I brought a bunch of games because you see I have so many. Uh, but I only wanted to trade and so I didn't unload many of them. Most people just came and wanted to buy games, so I was like, no, I'm not going to sell you games. I'm only going to trade. Um, Golden City and Shrink Wrap. That tells you how much I've played it. I played Nautilus just as much. I haven't really played either of those. I'm, I'm interested in trying them, though. Some some reason the subject matter, I guess they're probably more themed than subject matter, is interesting to me in both of those games. Not sure when I'll do it. Um, here we have kind of a stack of Civilization games. It was higher. Um, I was on a civilization kick. Haven't played this one yet. It has these annoying plastic pieces that are in these racks still. I think whoever I traded it from, or I don't know where I got it, probably an auction or trade, uh, didn't even play it either. <laughs> but it's got a ton of stuff. Um, and I've heard criticisms about this game because of uh, how much like big, 
you know, all these little things you got to move around. That's not so much a barrier for me because if you can play a game solitaire, if you can't play, if a game's hard to play solitaire and it's got that wonky stuff, then it can be more of a barrier just because you, know, you got a game in world. Origins: How We Became Human. Love that game. Love this game. Um. I'll show you how I package this. Uh, using up uh, the entirety of the internal box space is, uh, is an issue for me. Like, it bothers me when I can't. I got American Megafauna in here as well. Um, so you can also combine them for Animal Farm. Uh, but yeah, living rules. A little tiny box. Here's a, here's a place where the box worked well. Um, you know, you got all the the American megafauna tents in there. I think you can see that through the translucent plastic. And then there's this monasteries. I think that was probably left a card left out after um, the play by forum game I had, and then I just slipped it in the box rather than put it away properly. Uh, 2012. Uh, this is up here because I've been using the box lid to roll dice for this game over there. And I'll, I'll get to over there before before I'm done. Here we have a big row of games that fit in this space. Uh, a lot of them happen to be from one of the game shops that I go to had a got a big influx of used games. And they actually have another one, but they haven't processed them yet. Uh, hopefully they tell me they'll have a silent auction and then maybe I'll get way too many more new games. But I am interested in old games. They're harder to get into because um, they're just they're written with a different language slightly than some of the newer stuff. Um, they're very much into, well, anyway, I won't go into that. Our Town, this is a family pastimes game, um, kind of like a like a socialist monopoly, is how I describe it, from not having played it yet, so I can't really say, but just, uh, you know, from what I remember the glance over, lots of these games tend to be space games, um, mainly because, you know, I rarely will choose a two-player game. I just, I don't know. Um, but there's so many interesting two-player games. That's the tough thing about it. And I'll get into, um, you know, we'll talk about that more. Uh, Aries Project, I got that mainly because I'm, uh, the, the, person who, uh, the person who made it uh, does a podcast, and he's, he seems very thoughtful, and I, I enjoy thoughtful people. Um, High Frontier, haven't played it. Um, time Agent? Haven't played Time Agent yet. That's going to be big in the tournament, though. And Throne World as well, side by side. Time Agent, I, that was one of the first games I got. That I actually, I, I bought it on, I bought it on eBay. And then, um, was looking into it, and there were some videos about it. And I was like, okay, I'll watch these videos. <laughs> I bought it not knowing anything about it. Um, just like when I was first into games, I was like, oh, I should get some games. This is cheap. I can get Time Agent, and that sounds really great. Um, and there's this mustachioed man who turned out to be Callendale. Um, great influence on me, Callendale, and all of his, all of his thoughts. Um, and if you haven't watched Callendale's stuff, which you probably have if you're watching this, because you, because you like listening to someone talk for a long time, uh, you, you should. Um, Throne World, interestingly enough, there's kind of this reviewer circle. Throne World, I traded, I got in a trade with Marnado, who is also a um, reviewer. I Unfortunately, when I traded him that, I remember I sent him some real people cards, which is too bad because um, I don't have the full set of real people cards. I sent them all off to different people, some of them. Over here we have Battle Stations, uh, this Lord of the Rings box, which I, was a Goodwill find. I don't know if I even have the I think I, I gave the cards to someone. Um, it uh, has some more battle station stuff. They don't all fit in the box, which is uh, which is sad to me. Here's my telephone. I don't usually answer it. Um, going down, we have some stuff. These are from an, my filing cabinet. I was nominally doing some organization at some point. Uh, that's I think th this box has the makings of a game that. Um, I'm making called Minds Among Monsters, and I think the regular the expansion stuff are in that box up there. The Heos, I'm using some of the pieces for something. Then we have a bunch of games on here that I'm kind of probably not going to play, uh, or you know, would be willing to trade. Um, 
Not techno witches though, not career. Actually, that's not even true. I don't know why I said that. Now that I'm seeing what's down here, that's not entirely the case. This Duel of Ages, I don't know what's in it. It's not Duel of Ages. There's probably something like something else. When I got Duel of Ages, um, I got a bunch of boxes from someone and then I put them all in my sack, in an old saxophone case. I can show you that later. So here's a more like readily accessible shelf. It's easier to get to than that one maybe. Um, but it's not, they're not really organized in a particular way. I think I did once upon a time, but they, it's more about space and kind of subject matter in a way. Um, so we have these kind of gamey games here. Um, Kronos? I, I like Kronos. I don't, I, yeah. Primordial Soup, that was one I, I was going to review. I don't know if I will or not. Um, this game looks interesting. Courtesans of Versailles. I haven't played it yet, but... Uh, Shogun, yeah. Have some more games. This one I got at a comic sh or at a game store just to kind of support them. Um, seemed like the most interesting of the games they had there. Um, and I think I had found some money on the street earlier that day or something. Tales of the Arabian Nights is fun once in a while. I really like that game. Um, restaurant, <laughs> no. Uh, here's the box for. First American Chrononaut. I don't know if I. This is another collage project. Um, just collaged a bunch of the games along with this kind of jewelry catalog. I don't. It seemed to kind of work. A bead catalog, I think. Um, there's my innovation games. I grab those down a lot. Here are kind of more party ish games. Oh, and here's Search for Poseidon's Gold. I really got to finish that video project. Uh, Dixit. Here's a box for a game I made called Backers, Amalgamations of the Spiritual Hinterlands. Um, kind of a story game slash board game kind of thing. Made it before I was really exposed to a lot of games. Ghost Stories, an old classic, one of my first games right there. Everway is a role-playing game that uses cards instead of dice. and it's. Um, Kind of, I think, in the growing pains between role-playing games and sto in the story game type of role-playing game. Space Alert is a game that I wanted to, I thought, like, certain people I know would get into, but I've never, like, been able to put forth the energy to play it. I probably never will, would be my guess. Um, I like Battlestar Galactica. Uh, over here, kind of going through history. For a while, I was trying to mix in books along with... Uh, historical games. Um, De Vulgari Eloquentia. I was able to pack Siena, which is also by the same guy, Mario Papini. He also did Feudo. Interesting designer, I think. Um, he doesn't desi design a style of games I normally want to play, but he always has some interesting concepts in his games, which I don't know if that's true of Feudo, but the two that I'm familiar with, De Vulgari Eloquentia and Siena. Conquistador is a game I'm excited to get into. Um, let's see. Here I stand, Virgin Queen, side by side. Those are exciting. Some more games here. I, Clash of Monarchs, I've actually played with a live person. And I'm, not, I don't, I'm not excited about that game. I don't know. I think it's, it just feels like a very rigid game to me. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe I'm missing something, but um, it's not... I guess I, I'm not interested in history for history's sake as much as some people who would be into history games. I, I want, uh, I, I haven't thought this concept out, but um, I don't know. When I, when I, I, I play, I'll play a war game more for the politics than for the war, I guess. And the, the political options in Clash of Monarchs, they're kind of, they're kind of like the economic options in um, Crusoe's Planet. You kind of like, you get to make a choice, but it's like kind of one choice and then you got to stick with it. You know, you don't, get, there's not more than that. You, you, there's, uh, there are some interesting choices in it, but there's, uh, I don't know, it felt kind of plodding to me. Um, I could see how someone would really like this, though, if they're interested in that period. Um, 1776, haven't played it. Wilderness War, haven't played it, but I've really enjoyed um, the other designs that I've played by uh, Volko Runke. 
who is the guy who made this. Um, these, you know, these, I, I really enjoy these games. I, I know they're maybe not the best historical treatments. I really couldn't say, but they're fun. They're, they're like, uh, anime fighting games for me. Um, War and Peace, I have an incomplete copy, which I don't know if I'm going to try and remedy that or not. I'm kind of bouncing up and down on that. A lot of these games you're seeing uh, are just games I've accumulated because I'm like, oh, this game doesn't have a lot of information on it. I'm going to try and, like, discover what, what there is about this game and make a video. I can, you know, it, but it's like I got way ahead of myself. I got way too many games, way more games than I'm going to have the energy or the inclination to deal with. Honor of the Samurai is a great, great example of that. This one I actually traded with a local guy who I had some games he really wanted. So it was kind of like the same with Course in Versailles. I think it was the same trade. I just wanted to be able to trade with him, you know, and, and, Per possibly play these games. Days of Decision is a game I'm really interested in. It takes a lot though. Um, sometime when this table is clear again, I'll probably have two games going after this is done. Um, I would, I'm going to set that up and really enjoy it. I started playing once on this table, but using the floor. That's not ideal for a game like this. Uh, I couldn't see all the information and yeah. Um, Oh, and they're by the same designer. I didn't even think of that. But they're both very big games. Multiple maps that uh, about showing different things. I always I really like that concept. Shapeshifters does that too. Um, has a map for your shape as well as like a physical map. This has a map for your political relations as well as a physical map. And I, I think a lot more can be done with that. Europa. Talked about this recently. Um, great game. Imperial 2030. I love this game. Inside, I have another game, which I might try to combine with Imperial 2030. It seems like subject-wise it might be interesting. Uh, Megacore. It's uh, kind of got a similar thing, but looking at it from a different perspective. Um, with the whole, uh, the whole corporations controlling governments sort of thing. Uh, no, Robert's Rules of Order, I think, fell in there. I'll have to put that away later. Some, yeah, this is kind of a little political niche, is what that is. Um, here we have Lords of Sierra Madre. I've played some Lords of uh, the Spanish Main. I, that's a cool game. I haven't played Sierra Madre yet, but um, I think it's they're probably kind of similar. And Sierra Madre maybe has the benefit of not having boats. I don't know. Cowboys Way of the Gun. I've played this game. Um, <coughs> it's, 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 it's what it is. You know, it's what it says. You're shooting at people. It's definitely the way of the gun. Um, some kind of, oh, here we have, uh, a set of, um, spy type games, uh, from World War II. I, you know, I'm not particularly interested in war, like I said, but I think cloak and dagger stuff is interesting and that kind of end of it is interesting. And war has an interest because it's part of the world, but it's not like, it's not proportionate to the number of, my interest is not proportionate to the number of war games I actually have. Um, like Ambush, for example, I got because of the solitaire, the, the way it uses a book, kind of like um, Tales of the Arabian Nights. And I was just, it's really fascinating game how it's put together. And I don't know if they'd ever make a game like that again. Same with Fields of Fire. Um, just, yeah, I was interested in that. I got this from a Secret Santa. Um, I sent my Secret Santa, Imperial 2030, had to send it to Russia which was difficult for me to figure out how to do that. Here we got some interested in these like l lesser known wars. I like that it's the Toyota Wars. Chaco, I was reading some, this is Chaco. I got the counter set in front of it, but you can see Chaco there. I was reading some of the, um, the history on it. Pretty interesting stuff. Like the, the place they're fighting over was just disgusting and it was just kind of a Anyway, um, Ici C'est la France. This is another kind of counterinsurgency game, um, but a different, you know, different w way of looking at it than the Runki games I have down here. Um, yeah, interesting game though. I will hopefully review that someday. Um, this was up there with the Civilization games, but it fit, they fit so nicely down here that, that I put them there. Labyrinth, The War on Terror. I have a song I'm writing about this game. I might make a music video for it. Um, Andy and Abyss. Hopefully going to do a play-by-form game of that soon. 
Great game. Here's the lovely princess. This is just kind of a stack of, there's some zines in here too, but just kind of games that fit in this space. Um, a lot of them happen to be family pastimes. These are kind of fantasy game type things in here. Here is a... <laughs> this is... Um... Woo! So that's something that Worlds of Heroes and Tyrants does. Um, I jostled aside the battery, and I don't know if you even saw the part where um, I introduced Worlds of Heroes and Tyrants. I dropped my camera at some point and lost the plastic piece that holds the battery intact, so the battery just uh, suddenly came out and so it stopped. Anyway, so Worlds of Heroes and Tyrants, I can't imagine buying this for full price, $28, and it's like, this, I got these for like $2 each, I think, but it's like, I'm not, I mean, let me show, see if I can show you the map. It was like, they were, shop I got it at, really was trying to get rid of it. Which, I just don't know what the idea was behind it. I feel like, from what I've heard of Talisman, I feel like someone played Talisman and was like, oh, let's make our own Talisman. Um, here's the one of the maps um, of Worlds of Heroes and Tyrants. I like that shape it's making. Um, I haven't played it, but interesting. I, I, I like to think about the person who made this game, or the people who made this game. So that's in this uh, headbands box. Headbands are, are great for real people cards, by the way. I thought about doing a video about this, but you can put the, like if you're role playing or whatever, you can put the real people card in the headband. And that can be you. Um, this is kind of a shelf where I just set things. Um, my wife gave me these book boxes, which I, I can use for games. I actually have my lifeboat game in one of those. My box of little little figures that are nice for games. Um, this is a pile. Um, what do we have down here? Zendo. This is uh, Crusoe's Planet. It's a little book. It's got some stuff in it that I did on notebook paper. Um, what's this game? This is not held in Inter Intervelt. I have all of the Return of the Heroes games in one box, which is very satisfying for me. One reason I'm never going to trade those games is because they are all in one box. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lords of the Spanish Main is in there. This has, um, not Duel of Ages, it has Kriegbot as, and I think, uh, yeah, Hard Vacuum is in here as well, as well as the Science ex Expansion. I don't know what's in the White Moon box. Okay, so I think we've looked at all of those. Here we have the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament 7x7 seven seven Ages. It looks like Cowboy fell down. Yep, he's down there. Um, all set to, to do another one. Have Everyone's made their choices. Just haven't done it yet. We go down here, we have my Duel of Ages box. It's kind of in disarray because, you know, when, I, when I'm playing, I'm, I'm definitely getting messier and then I put it all away. Um, so that's basically the room. Have some a light up there, a light over there. That's nice for lighting this big table, which I love but never use for anything anymore. Um, here's a little picture I cut out of a college catalog for the local community college they sent us. Send us, and I like to put these certain pictures that are interesting to me up here. So, like these guys are from a, like a doctor catalog or something. Those are my teeth. Um, these are the different mayors of my local area. Um, this is the expansion that's never going to be made uh, for Crusoe's Planet, but I've got some of the information from it. I love this picture. This is, <laughs> this is they got it at a fire station in a pamphlet. Uh, I don't even know what the pamphlet was for, but that, that's just such a great, great piece of, piece of art there. These are beets. My brother-in-law made that. Um, I think that's about it. Look out here. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna go out because people are busy out there. But this is um, just kind of a stack of other games for the family to play, right there. And there's there's a stack, and then that shelf. You can't really see it, but that also has some games. 
All right, I think I went over everything. Um, that's a map for battle stations, which I think is really helpful if you're going to play that game. To, it gives it a sense of place. Um, yeah, there's there's my there's this is my world.